at some point you will need to work with forms in PHP or you might need to make other types of requests to your application. These requests can come from JavaScript, third-party APIs, mobile apps, and so on, in addition to the web forms. Right now, based on the routing that we've set up in the previous lesson, we technically only support GET requests, but what if we wanted to make a POST request and access the data that's passed in within the request body? Before we get started, please hit the like button if you enjoy my content, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos. You probably already know what GET and POST requests are. When you visit a page like this homepage on the localhost, for example, it makes a GET request. The data that's passed in with the GET request is appended in the query string. So if you go to Google and search for something, it will make a GET request and append the search query along with other parameters in the query string. So you will see them in the URL. You could of course change it, right? And you could also add more data or remove the data from the query string. For example, we could add in some full bar here. Now let's inspect that request. Let's refresh the page. And if we inspect the request, we see that request method is set to GET. And if we scroll all the way down, we see that foo is set within the query string parameters with the value of bar. We can add more values here, something like amount equals to 10 and hit enter. We inspect the request and we see the amount within the query string parameters. So you would use the get request whenever you're retrieving the data or whenever you're viewing something. So it's mainly meant for data fetching. However, if you need to store data or make changes to it, then get request should not really be used. Instead, you would use post request. In the case of post request, the data is not appended in the query string, but instead it's submitted within the body of the HTTP request. So it's hidden from the URL, but can still be accessed when inspecting the request just like we did right here. To give you a few examples, if you were submitting a form that performed some sort of searching or sorting to fetch some data, you would use get request. User also could bookmark the URL and then visit it at later time and the search and sorting fields would be applied. If you were retrieving user information by user ID or the invoice information by invoice ID, then you would probably use get request as well. However, if you were making a request to log the user in or charge user's credit card to make a purchase, for example, then you would use the post request instead of the get request. So how can we access the data that's passed in within this query string or within the request body if we're making a post request? We can use the super globals get and post in PHP to access these data. Let's switch over to the home class here and simply var dump the get super global and then we can also var dump the post super global. Let's add some pre tags here so that it looks nice and pretty and let's refresh the page. As you can see the post super global is empty because we're not making a post request we are making a get request and the data from the query string within the URL is available as an associative array within the get super global. Let's create a simple form and make a post request so that we can actually see the data within the post super global as well. Instead of returning this home string here we can simply return some kind of form with the label for the amount and an input type text with the name of amount and we can specify the method to be post because if we don't specify the method it will submit it as a get request but if we specify the method as post then it will submit it as a post request. Now we could also specify the action so in this case we can set it to the home page for now. Let's actually get rid of the query string from here and refresh the page and let's enter 100 in the amount field and press enter and as you can see that amount is available within the post super global and not within the get. Now even though we're submitting a post request here we can still have get parameters meaning that you can still have data within the query string so we could simply pass in some data here via the query string by appending it to the url so we can say foo equals to bar and let's refresh the page and let's resubmit the form hit enter and as you can see now we have both get and post super globals populated with the data if we inspect the request here and scroll all the way down we see that foo bar is within the query string parameters and amount 100 is within the form data. Now let me show you one thing here that you should be aware of. Let's say that we were passing in a value for the amount field through a query string as well. So let's say we set this to 250. Let's resubmit the form and sure enough now amount is submitted within the get request as well with a value of 250 and it's also submitted within the post request with a value of 100 because that's what we entered in the field. Now this is not really a problem because the amount field exists in both get and post even though they have different values you would probably use the one from the post request and it's not conflicting right however there is a third super global called request which contains all the data from the get and post as well as the data from the cookie super global which we'll talk about later in the course so let's duplicate this and var dump the request super global
Global here. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, the request Super Global contains the full bar, which is coming from the query string. It contains the amount 100, which is coming from the request body from the post Super Global right here. And then it contains the cookie value here, which you can ignore for now. This is the cookie that I never cleared. It's part of uh, my other video that I worked on about Laravel. So you can ignore it for now. But it's a good example that it shows you that it's including the cookies here as well. Now, the problem here is that if you were using the request to access the amount field, you would be accessing the value from the post data and not the get data. In some cases, that might be okay, but in other cases, it might cause some bugs. So by default, if the keys are the same in both post and get, and you use the request data, the data from the post will take precedence, and that's the data that will be used within the request super global. Note that the order of variables as well as the presence of them in the request super global array is based on couple of PHP configuration directives, which are request order and variables order. And I think we covered these in the first section of the course when we covered PHP configuration. Also note that the cookies might not be included by default in the request super global due to security. I wouldn't worry about this too much though, since you would probably never use request super global and simply use get and post super globals directly. In fact, I would advise to avoid using request super global unless you have a really good use case for it. All right, now that we know what the get post and request super globals are and how to access the data from the requests, let's improve our routing because our routing currently only supports the get request, right? What if we wanted to make a post request to the same route here, but execute a different method? Right now, if we make a post request to this route, it will work, but it's going to execute the create method on the invoice class. And that's not ideal, right? Because the create method should probably render some kind of HTML form for user to fill in and submit it. And then we might want to execute another method here called store to actually create that invoice. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually return some kind of form from the create method that makes a post request to the same route. We can simply copy the same form from here and let's get rid of this and let's bring this back to what it was before. That looks good. Now let's switch over to the invoice and instead of returning create invoice, let's return this form and we can make the post request to invoices create. Let's visit invoices slash create. Now let's enter some amount, hit enter. And as you can see, it's making the post request to the same endpoint and it's just returning the empty form here. And that's not ideal. So let's fix that. What we need to do is we need to make a request to another method here called store, which simply accepts the amount from the post request like this. And then we could simply var dump it. So let's switch over to the index. And instead of calling register, what if we could simply call get in this case like this, we're registering the get requests for these routes. And then we could duplicate this and register a post request for the same route. Now we need to implement these methods within our router class, right? So let's open the router and right after register, we can create a function called get, which accepts and returns the same thing as the register method. So we could actually copy this and paste it here and change this to get. And now what we can do is that we can simply return this register and maybe pass in another argument in the register method that registers get request. So maybe we can pass in a method here called get and then pass in the route and pass in the action. That means that we need a third argument here called request method. And we can simply use that as a key for the routes. So we can do something like this. So now instead of just the route being the key in the routes array, we have the request method that's a key in the routes array. And then each request method contains its own routes. Let's do the same thing for the post, change these to post, and that should be it. Let's add another method here to retrieve all the routes. So we can call this routes, return this routes. Now this of course is not going to work. If I refresh the page here, we see that we're getting 404 not found. That's because this line right here is trying to get the route using the route as the key and it doesn't exist, right? We need to retrieve this route from either a get or post. That means that we need another argument here to get the requested method. So we can accept the request method here and simply use that to retrieve the route. Now we need to pass in the request method here. And as you remember from the last lesson, the server super global contains the request method as one of its items. So we could pass that in this way and let's refresh the page. And we're still getting 404 because the request method is all uppercase get and we are storing it as lowercase get and post. So we can simply use string to lower function. Let's make this a little bigger. Like 
like this and refresh the page and sure enough now it works now we can change the method of the post request to execute the store method instead of the create so let's refresh let's submit amount 100 and sure enough now it's hitting the store method and printing 100 so as you can see we have improved our routing to be able to register both get and post routes if you had other types of routes like put delete or patch you would register them the same way and just implement the support for it within your router class now as i mentioned before this is not to be used for production it's just for you to understand how it works this is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it we're getting close to the mvc pattern which we'll talk about in the third section of the course as you noticed here we kind of rendered html and returned html directly from the classes and that is not the proper way the proper way would be to return or render some sort of views and that's something that we'll cover in the third section of the course thank you so much for watching if you enjoy my content please give my videos thumbs up if you have any feedback please post it in the comments it really helps with the youtube's algorithm share and subscribe and i'll see you next time